The last step to creating the iOS metronome app is to import the PD metronome class and create an instance of it in the view controller. Within viewcontroller.h, I'll import the PD metronome class that I created earlier. Then I'll create a public property called metronome that is of the type PD metronome. Now let's head to viewcontroller.m. I'm going to use a technique called lazy instantiation to instantiate the instance of the PD metronome. Here I'm going to modify the getter for the metronome. I'll test to see if the backing variable is nil. If it is, then I'll create an instance of the metronome. As well, I'll go ahead and set the on property of the metronome to no, meaning that it won't be on. Finally, I need to make sure that I always return the instance of the metronome class, so I'll return the backing variable. We'll now head to viewed load, and we'll synchronize data between the metronome instance and the user interface. To do this, we'll set the various user interface outlets with data from the metronome. This includes the state of the on-off switch, the text of the BPM label, the slider value, and the number of subdivisions currently set in the metronome. The last thing we need to do is we need to connect the user interaction with the metronome class, and we do that with each of the actions connected to user interface elements. Within the onSwitchChange method, I'll cast the sender as a UI switch, and then grab its value and assign it to the on property of the metronome instance. I'll head to on BPM slider change and I'll send the val variable set up earlier to the BPM property of the metronome instance. Finally, I'll head to on subdivision change, I'll cast the sender as a UI segmented control, and I'll set the subdivisions to the selected segment index of the segmented control. That's the last bit of coding I need to do, now it's time to test the application. So I'll run the simulator, and I'll turn on the metronome. As I change the slider, you hear the rate change. Using the subdivision control, I can change the number of subdivisions that click per beat. That's all for this series on building an iOS metronome app with LivePD. I hope this enables you to further explore LivePD and iOS and build some fantastic interactive sound and music apps. If you haven't already done so, take a moment to like this video and subscribe to the channel. I'm Dr. Rafael Hernandez, and until we learn together again, take care.